Hello, I'm Pastor Ethany Schmidt, and I'd like to welcome you to the April 30th worship service for Slayton United Methodist Church and Lake Wilson United Methodist Church. I first want to mention that the production costs of our worship service today has been donated by Doris Schreier, and Doris is a member of our Slayton United Methodist Church. This is in uh, memory of her daughter, Kristen, who was taken to her heavenly home um, years ago on May 2nd. So I thank Doris for that. I am doing a sermon series called A Living Hope in this post Easter season, um, we need to remember that we serve a risen Savior, giving us so much hope. And today, the, the uh, ser sermon title is Guardian of the Soul. And I am in 1 Peter. I'm in the second chapter, and I want to read verses 19 through 25. And this is the translation of the message. You who are servants, be good servants to your masters, not just to good masters, but also to bad ones. What counts is that you put, put up with it for God's sake when you're treated badly for no good reason. There's no particular virtue in accepting punishment that you well deserve. But if you're treated badly for good behavior and continue in spite of it to be a good servant, that is what counts with God. This is the kind of life you've been invited to, the kind of life Christ lived. He suffered everything that came his way so you would know that it could be done and also know how to do it step by step. He did he never did one thing wrong. Not once said anything amiss. They called him every name in the book and he said nothing back. He suffered in silence, content to let God set things right. He used his servant body to carry our sins to the cross so we could get rid of sin, free to live the right way. His wounds became your healing. You were lost sheep with no idea who you were or where you were going. Now you're named and kept for good by the shepherd of your souls. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The guardian of our soul. Today, like last week, um, we have two scriptures on the lectionary schedule that really complement each other. And the commodality word of both involves the idea of suffering. Now, the second scripture I'm going to get to in just a few minutes. Now, on the one hand, Talking about suffering is easy. Everyone has an experience with suffering. But our pain is our pain, and we have to realize that it's our individual pain, and it is real, and it shapes who we are and how we respond to the world. That is what Peter is trying to get us to understand, how we live with suffering and how we acknowledge God's presence in our suffering. God's presence is what makes us able to endure it. There is a presence, a shepherd of the soul, he argues, that gives us hope. And that presence is one who is familiar with suffering. And the key here is not to diminish our pain by comparing it to his. Rather, the promise is that this one understands and this one has been where we are. This one walks with us into the suffering that we go through. The shepherd is a close companion, not one who waits until we make it through on our own, and then gives us a gold star 
or some other accommodation. No, this one is right here with us. This one knows this shepherd cares for us. We understand shepherds because we've we've uh, we've heard about them over and over again. If you're a, a longtime Christian and a Bible reader, and even although most of us aren't full of experience about being herding herding sheep or working with sheep, we are definitely familiar with the image. We've heard the sermons and and seen the images of Jesus as the good shepherd. And so we kind of get it. And so then it's now that I I want to say Psalm 23. Say it with me if 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 you can. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. We like to, to think that, that this psalm was one that, that David wrote, although there's nothing absolute in, um, in so many of the psalms. Something that he probably plucked out on a, on a lazy afternoon as he looked after the sheep. Well, I came across a little video about this psalm and the green pastures it speaks about. And it will be tagged onto this message. I hope you take time to watch it. It will show that in our life, we won't necessarily receive green pastures to gorge on. Rather, God will provide us with just enough for us. We need to be assured of this, accepting of this, and realize that our needs might be surrounded with rocks on our path, which we will call struggles and sufferings, but he will be there as our shepherd to lead us along, giving us spiritual and physical food as we need it. Now, the final note of this particular psalm seems to kind of hang in the air like a spark ascending from a warming fire. David senses that he isn't as alone as he thought when he began to sing the psalm. When it says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord all my life long. Going back to the beginning, though, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Not because wanting is bad, but because there is nothing to want anymore. The 23rd Psalm speaks of a someday, of a someday when the deepest longings, the strongest desires are satisfied by a relationship with the divine, with something bigger than anything our minds can comprehend. We call that something Father, because we want it, him to be as real as those strong arms that wrap around us when the storm begins to rage around us. And we want it to be like that guiding hand that I spoke about a few minutes ago, that helps us see the world right in front of our face. Not because of our fear or our ignorance or our selfishness. We can't, we can see it, but we are assured that he will guide us through it. 
In the meantime, we do want, because we're humans, we do want. And because we live in a world of amazing resources, we can be convinced that this thing or that thing can feel an aching need. And if we just had one of those, or if we just looked like her, or if I drove a car like that, if I dressed like certain people, then our wanting would be done. Except it never is. The fixes that the world officers office, offers are just so short term. They might last a while, but then we need to upgrade. Then we need the next new thing. Sound familiar? Must we be satisfied being half empty? It's a question. Must we be content with a vacancy in significant places? Must we learn to live with what is? Good enough is good enough? That's not what the 23rd Psalm says. It talks of banquet tables. It talks of overflowing cups. It talks of peace and, and being pursued by goodness and mercy. It talks about not wanting, not because you've trained yourself not to want, but because you are filled up and actually spilling over. Yes, some of it is learning to want properly. I get that. But mostly... It is being so filled up with love and support and care that you just can't imagine what could possibly be better than that. Yes, friends, being filled with the love of Jesus far exceeds anything that this world has to offer. Amen. Let us pray. Once again, Almighty God, we are thankful for the scriptures within your holy word, for the most popular text recognized by man on this whole earth is the 23rd Psalm. So we're thankful for it, but also for the passage of 1 Peter, for the realization that there are suffering and difficult times that will come to us in our earthly life, but that it can be navigated by the shepherd, our heavenly father, our good shepherd, who desires a relationship with us, who will provide a guiding hand in seeing us through everything that we encounter. And that everything will be given to us in just the right amount, at just the right time, Yes, we thank you for that. We are also filled with gratitude in the way that you care for us, for providing for us, for our warm homes, for the beauty of spring and the surroundings of just the green grass and the flowers, the butterflies that are appearing, and the songs of the birds. For the schools as they are heading into their last month, we just, we're grateful. But also within this prayer, Lord, we realize that there are those who are going through difficult times. And so we ask for healing for those who may be going through health crises. We desire to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And so show us the many ways that we can care for others. As we do each week, we conclude this prayer by saying the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, I thank you for joining us on our service today. If you would have any questions for me personally as a pastor, please call me on the name, um, on the number provided on the screen. If you'd like to speak to um, our church secretary or leave a message for any reason, well, the phone number for our church office is there as well. And then if you would like to financially support either one of our two churches, please send any contributions to the two addresses listed. And now I would like you to receive the benediction. May the love of Christ, the realization of having a heavenly father and a good shepherd carry you throughout today, throughout this week, and always. Amen.